Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in October. First up I read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and I borrowed a copy from the library and I've already returned it. And this was my pick for the Pittsburgh Horror Book Club. It's a Victorian novel and I believe Oscar Wilde's only novel. He wrote a bunch of plays. I've not read anything by him before so I was really looking forward to this one and I thought October seemed like a good time of year for a gothic tale. And it's a very famous story. Uh, the basic premise is that a young man has his portrait painted and as time goes on he doesn't age but the painting gets worse and worse and all of the horrible things that he does add to the horror of the painting. So I found this a bit of a mixed bag. I thought the story itself was brilliant. My problem with it was there are quite lengthy parts of it where it kind of goes off on a bit of a tangent and it's not as relevant to the storyline itself. I get it has a relevance to um, being, you know, a social commentary of that period of time, but there were times when it just went on and on and I was like, let's just get back to the story please, that's much more interesting. I think that's just a thing with classic literature, you know, it's a completely different time period, but in all honesty I just found those parts of the book really boring and tough to get through. Saying that, I loved parts of the book and I loved the story itself. I wish it just stuck to the story and kind of continued, then it, it would have been amazing, I think. It just kind of felt quite disjointed when the story was moving along and then you'd stop to have like a really lengthy discussion about something that didn't seem as important. The language is a bit flowery and sometimes literally flowery. He's talking about everything looks like a rose over and over again. And maybe classics aren't for me. I haven't studied English literature. I'm sure if you have, you could get a lot more out of this book and other classics. But I primarily read for enjoyment. So if I'm not enjoying a book, then yeah, it kind of detracts from the experience. But yeah, back to the good parts of the book. The story was brilliant, I really loved it. Dorian Gray is just an absolutely horrible human being and he does some really horrible things. And there were definitely some really creepy, disturbing parts of the book which were really awesome. So yeah, overall I enjoyed it. When I first finished this, I gave it three stars just because the boring parts really detracted from the whole thing for me. But after a while of kind of, you know, digesting it. I ended up giving it four stars overall because the brilliant bits were really brilliant and it's such a great story and really well told. Next up I read Child of Demons by Mason Burgess and I only picked this up because of the amazing cover and cheesy title. Uh, this is a horror novel obviously and I got this, I think, a couple of months ago from a local uh, used book sale. So I think it was only a dollar or two. When I got this home, I had a look online. And I think on Goodreads, it had five reviews. And I think it was two stars <laughs> rating. So yeah, I went in with very low expectations. And I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either, honestly. Uh, the story is about a young girl and she starts to have these nightmares and then she meets this figure called Adam in her dreams who is trying to teach her how to use a special power that she has and so in the real life, in the waking world, um, she begins to use this power and basically people start dying. Her parents who are divorced and each have drinking problems, are trying to do their best to help her and they end up taking her to a psychiatrist to try and get some help. There were a few other characters were introduced to over the course of the story and they have some involvement in this kind of other realm where Adam 
lives and this young girl yeah and it was okay you know it wasn't great but it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be I kind of thought it was going to be so unreadable that I wouldn't even get through the whole thing but I did um, and it was certainly fairly fast paced so it was quite an easy read I wouldn't highly recommend it because it wasn't amazing or anything but it was all right I enjoyed it and I gave it three stars out of five next up I read the Winter People by Jennifer McMahon and this I got last month I think from a library book sale so this one was super cheap as well and this is it's kind of part mystery part ghost story kind of thing I'd heard that this was really creepy and I had initially intended to wait until winter to read it obviously but I just was really in the mood to check it out so I read it in October and it was good but it wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be I think I was a bit disappointed in it it wasn't like I had super high unachievable hopes for it or anything but I expected to like it more than I actually did it tells a story over two different time periods one is back in the early 1900s and we're following a woman called Sarah and her husband and their young daughter and then we're also following a few characters in the present day who end up having a connection to Sarah and a diary that she had written I think I enjoyed the present day storyline a bit more than the old one I just didn't like Sarah the character I just found her kind of annoying <laughs> and you know she's meant to be one of the main characters and a sympathetic character it did have a couple of creepy moments I will admit and I enjoyed that but it wasn't a prolonged thing that went throughout the book it was really just a couple of moments it was a fairly quick read it's fairly fast paced and I enjoyed it it definitely had some great atmosphere it's set in Vermont and it's very cold and snowy the way that the different storylines for the characters came together was quite interesting and I liked how that was written but I think ultimately the way it all kind of wrapped up at the end was just a bit unsatisfying so yeah I enjoyed it somewhat and I gave it three stars out of five and last up I read Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz with drawings by Stephen Gamble and I read this um, just close to Halloween because why not and I'd never read this before I'd heard a lot about it I don't know if this is very big in the UK I had never actually heard about it until recent years and I think my first introduction to it was seeing the illustrations online and everyone talking about how it was the scariest book when they were kids which is understandable because the illustrations are terrifying the stories in here were okay it was a quick read I realized that I'm not the target market for this um, I think it says on about yeah ages nine and up so I mean technically I am the stories were okay somewhat enjoyable one thing I did find interesting was um, apparently Alvin Schwartz is some kind of folklore expert and in the back there's a bunch of information about where all of the stories came from originally and lots of references for other books that if you're into that kind of thing uh, would be useful so I thought that was really cool and then of course the illustrations are absolutely amazing some of them are genuinely frightening and they're all very well done so yeah I kind of gave the stories three stars and the illustrations five so I averaged it out to giving it a four star out of five rating so that was everything I read in October let me know what you're reading at the moment or if you have any recommendations thank you ever so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video bye